Hi guys, and welcome back to another Dot Trace video, and today we're going to be playing MotoGP 21. We're going to be using Nicky Hayden in this magnificent American track of Laguna Seca. So starting in pole position is Tajiro Kato, Nakano and Byrne in the front row, Rossi Hayden and Melandri on the second, John Hopkins, Akawa, Barros, Gibbonau, Roberts Jr., Bayliss, and finally on the final row, Loris Caparossi and Max Biaggi. So we look to the lights for this America Grand Prix, and away we go! It's a decent start of Nicky Hayden, not quite getting the power that we really wanted, a little bit of lost traction, but we're getting up at the inside, around the, around the outside of Shaky Burn, bad start from him, but Tajiro Cage has gone down into Turn 1! Goodness me, and now Nicky Hayden's gone really wide for the Andretti hairpin, goodness me, what a start already in this Grand Prix! So Nicky Hayden goes from 5th to almost dead last, and Tajiro Cato did indeed go down into turn one. No idea what happened to the Japanese rider. Obviously some sort of mistake. I think he might have wheelied that stopped him from getting the drive going into the corner. And then of course us just absolutely losing traction and grip as we approached Shinya Nakano. The problem I had was I just couldn't get the bike stopped because Shinya Nakano occupied that position where we wanted to go. But for the time being we did move up to the inside of Loris Caparossi. We now have Max Piaggi to fight and contend with for 12th place. Or at least the 11th place if we manage to go up the inside of the Italian. Sete Ishiba now next to contend with. So it's a line of Hondas here. We've got uh, one Honda beat. Can we beat the next Honda? Oh, just touched the rear of Sete Ishiba now, which forced us wide. Did not able to get into that corner how we wanted it. Didn't really tackle the corkscrew as anywhere near though as we wanted it, quite honest with you. As we go onto the outside of the track there. Almost a track limits warning, but thankfully on that rumble strip. We're not looking too comfortable here, a little bit. A little bit worse for wear as we started this one, a little bit unorthodox, but we will calm down as uh, this Grand Prix progresses. Of course, this is a 11-lap Grand Prix here in Laguna Seca, a magnificent track, one of my most favourites of all time. But of course, this one being not a long track, to be honest with you, it's only 1 minute 32 laps, or it's actually going to be even less than that, probably a 1 minute 24, 25, as things get into it. So we now have Sete Gibbonau in our sights. We have Max Biaggi as well. Of course, still a battle of the Hondas as things stand right now. As Gibbonau's running a little bit wide, we'll be able to have the cut back. Beautifully done. Can we potentially go around the outside of Max Biaggi? This would be a beautiful move if Nick Hayden get this one done. And, oh, not quite. He definitely thought about it, though. Biaggi just forced him, the American, up wide. And now into the left-hand side for turn five. Oh, someone's gone down. Someone's gone down already in this Grand Prix. Was that John Hopkins? And didn't quite see who it was but someone has gone down into turn five very difficult corner to get right and someone has met their demise coming up to the tight corkscrew we're going to be breaking early here well before that rumble strip gradually bring on the break and just slowly come towards a corkscrew flick it to the left flick it to the right beautifully done and now power 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 to get behind kenny roberts jr will the suzuki man leave an opening for us so is Caden going to make his own opening beautifully done so we get onto the right hand side now, Troy Bayliss ahead of us, the winner of Valencia all those years ago and that sort of debut or at least a wild card race I think it was for him. So we get onto the rear of Troy Bayliss and they tend to swing it to the left there and probably don't need to do that. But to get into the slipstream we shall do that for now. 123.724 for Nicky Hayden, three tenths of a second behind the race leader Shinya Nakano. That is a wonderful move over the inside of Troy Bayliss. Will Bayliss have the cut back? Oh, it's going to be close, not quite. The Ducati didn't quite have the same handling like the Honda to navigate Andretti hairpin lines. Well, but beautiful move on the inside from Troy Bayliss. I certainly didn't see that coming, and neither did you. Now onto the right-hand side for turn four, using a lot of speed here. We are into power setting two. I haven't really touched power setting three because I did find it a little bit too easy. But uh, considering this one's been a little bit hectic, maybe power setting two will be quite sufficient for the time being. We'll now close in on the, the Australian. Just ahead of us, Toru Car is well ahead. He's just a further, little bit further up the road. Another Honda to add to the many, many packs of Hondas in this Grand Prix currently. Now coming over the inside for turn eight of the corkscrew. I tell you what, that's a good move and we make it stick. Oh, it's beautiful. Put that in the Dot Race archive of overtakes. Dot Race on board the controller beats another AI rider. <laughs> beautifully done. Now we've got on the rear of Toru Akawa. Shaky Burns having a decent race so far. Pretty impressive to put that Aprilia up onto the front row as it stuns. But never mind, we're going over the inside of Toru Akawa. Excuse me, American in his own track is coming through. We could quite possibly set a very good lap here. And that is a very consistent pace. We only lost a tenth 
even though we've had to take two riders there. And actually, I did John Hopkins a disservice. I said the American had crashed out into turn five, but I was totally wrong. I don't even recall who it was. I actually didn't see who went down. So, oh, contact made there between the two Americans. John Hopkins pushed wide as Shaky Burn tries to come to the inside now. I don't think he's going to make it stick, is he? He's getting close to the rear of Nicky Hayden, but quite frankly, that would have been a dangerous lunge if he decided to stick with that one. Now coming up to the nine times world champion, but at this point he was on the Galois Yamaha, the Go Yamaha, so I think that would have been, what, four or five world champions? Something like that, onto the left-hand side. But turn six, beautifully done. We're carrying a lot of speed on board this Honda. We are losing a little bit of fuel here, so we might have to drop it down into Power City 1, or potentially remain on 2, as Rossi defends well. Oh my goodness, look at that! You cheeky bugger! <laughs> he had the skill to just have a glance behind his shoulder and still tackle the corkscrew. That is beautiful. I do think they should get rid of that, though. Like, they always do it at the worst possible times. <laughs> it just looks weird. Like, Rossi literally went down there one-handed, Going down the corkscrew, having a good old look behind him to see who's there. It's a little bit unrealistic for my liking, but never mind, moving on. We did set the first lap of the Grand Prix with a 123-230, so grand job from Nicky Hayden, the American closing in on that magnificent livery. Absolutely gorgeous Spider-Man themed livery for the Fortuna Yamaha, I believe that is, that Marco Melandri is currently rocking. I can't really remember, and you know what, i never actually seen that particular livery when I was watching MotoGP back then. That's a, that's a new one for me. But after seeing him looking at the videos, my goodness, how awesome is that? Now going onto the left-hand side, we're getting ever so close to Malcolm. Oh, Melandry's gone down! Oh, no! I think I've just jinxed the poor bugger. Oh, Marco, I do apologize. Goodness me, we are thrashing this lap, however. Up by eight tenths of a second, closing in on Shinya Nakano quicker than you can say subscribe. Well, we're going on to the left-hand side now for turn eight, the corkscrew, where we're going to flick it to the right. A little bit of a glitch there on the rider's positioning. It tends to just be a bit juddery in that corner for some strange reason. But nonetheless, oh, a little bit wide there. Actually, sorry, too close to the inside line, so we went for the opposite. We went too tight, and therefore given ourselves a track limit warning. So, of course, in MotoGP's classic championships and races, etc., I don't believe that any of the long lap, uh, long lap penalties are enabled, so I don't know what that will give us. If we do exceed track limits too much, I'm guessing it'll just be like a penalty at the end of the race. Well, pretty good consistency from Nicky Hayden right now. The past couple of laps have been a big improvement. And considering that we started fifth place and we should really have already been here in second, we've done well to sort of claw our way back into it. Now, these 990cc bikes feel absolutely terrific. However, I did find the brakes were stronger than I believe. Well, well, maybe weren't as strong as I felt. So I was still braking as if it was a MotoGP machine, as in a current MotoGP bike. But it felt different. It does feel different in its own way. The acceleration is a lot gentle. It's a lot more gentle compared to the uh, current 1000cc bikes that we use in MotoGP 21. But, uh, yeah, I, I did like this one. So this is not a review of any way, because I've already played and uh, used the 99ccs before. But I have been really impressed with this one so far. I do really like using it, and I'm thrilled to announce that we will eventually be doing a uh, MotoGP 990cc championship. Of course, we'll be doing 800cc and the 500cc, of course, because we had a blast with the classic 500cc championship last time out in MotoGP 20 with Kevin Schwantz. Now onto the left-hand side for turn 11. We're closing in on the Japanese rider who's leaving this Grand Prix on board the Kawasaki, of course, doing a grand job. As we do improve our lap time once again, that is a 122.070. Pretty fine and dandy lap, I do say so myself. I'm quite happy with that one. We now count to the left-hand side for the Andretti hairpin. Closing in on Nakano all the time. Taking tenths away, hand over fist. It is only a matter of time before we chase down the Kawasaki and show him the Repsol Honda power. Now the tyres have taken a bit of a battering, especially on the left-hand side of the tyre. Of course, this one being a counterclockwise circuit, it does make sense that the left-handers of the tyre would be degraded quicker than the right-hand side. Now we get a little bit too close to turn five there, goodness me. Way too close for my liking. But a little bit of a hearts in mouth moment is good to keep one sane, I would say. Keep you on your toes, doesn't it? Just to make sure that I'm still breathing. <laughs> As we now get closer and closer, of course, we did lose a little bit of time there, but we're still going really close. But that is 
breaking very, very hard and very late for turn 8, the corkscrew. Almost rhymed accidentally there. So we now get on the left-hand side for turn 9, for the rainy curve, of course. Then we'll flick it right in a moment's time for turn 10. A little bit out of shape on the brakes there, breaking a little bit too early. And breaking into uh, after, well, at least breaking before the change of direction. And of course, you can't do that. You need to change the direction of the bike first before braking. And there is Shinya Nakano having a good old look from his shoulder as well. He's doing the Rossi that did us to us earlier. And I don't really recommend doing that, Shinya. You should be focusing on the Grand Prix. Don't worry about who's behind. Just, oh, we do get close to the rear of the Kawasaki. But Andretti Herbin, once again, eighth time of asking. Can we have a lunge up at the inside? Not going to go for it here. It's turn three. I'm wondering where we can make the overtake stick. I do feel like we've got a lot more speed. I think we might have more tyre life, and I do believe we have more fuel. It's just depending on where we want to go. I would like to go up at the inside here just after the Tiso sign, but we're not going to have... No, we're not going to be able to get close enough to him. Once he gets too close to the inside line as well, just like we did earlier, and just like Michael Melandri met his demise, we're up at the inside, and we now lead this Grand Prix for the time being. Can we check out from here? We're up by a tenth of a bit, two tenths of a second now, almost three tenths of a second. Going into the corkscrew now, right leg out for Nicky Hayden, flick it to the left, put it on the left hand side of the knee, and then flick it to the right. Beautifully done. Absolutely beautiful. Now onto the left hand side for the rainy curve. Wayne Rainey would have been very, very impressed with that one, very pleased. As we now go to the right hand side for turn 10. Power setting 2, of course, traction control setting 3, and anti wheelie is left as default as 5. Might fiddle around with that one as I get more and more confident with these 990cc machines. So currently as it stands, Hayden across the line is going to be a race winner with Nakano and Rossi on the podium. Great ride for John Hopkins, Toru Wakawa behind him, and of course Marco Melandri fell off a little bit after crashing into turn 5. Shane Byrne, pretty good for Shaky anyway, considering he did manage to get that Aprilia on the front row. I don't think anyone would have expected that. I don't believe he ever did chuck that Aprilia on the front row. Now going on the right-hand side for turn four, utilising a bit of rear tyre on this one. Maybe a little bit of brake there just to help keep the rear tyre warm. Now going to the left after the Tiso sign. Turn five, pretty grand job here from Nicky Hayden. Three tenths of a second down on his fastest lap time, which was a 122.070 which was set on lap 6 of this 11 lap Grand Prix. As always guys, let me know what you want to see in the comments section down below. I do feel like I haven't really mentioned that recently, but you guys obviously own the comment section and I want you guys to tell me what you want to see next. So if you want to see more 990cc or perhaps even 800cc or even uh, even the Red Bull Rookies Cup and eventually we'll have Moto E. So let me know in the comment section down below what you want to see more of next. Of course we do have some incredible mo career mode videos coming out soon hopefully you've seen the Le Mans video because that's probably my favorite career mode video I've done and of course we have many more career mode videos coming out soon now across the line we will go that is the penultimate lap now started we're up by a whopping two and a half seconds a consistent lap time again just after that little bit of a blip earlier where we dropped it down to a 122.8 the rest of the lap times have been very very consistent very, very good. Excuse me, it was the 123.304 is what the one I made a little bit of a mistake on. But we were slow a little bit when we were chasing down Shinji Nakano. Didn't really want to go for it too much, but I'm going to push on this lap. I really want to get into the 121s. You can't sit that close to a 121 without getting in it. Otherwise, you're just obviously not pushing hard enough. Now onto the left-hand side for turn fire. Up by 10th. Well, down by a 10th, I guess. Uh, so we'll see how things go. We'll, we've got a bit more of this lap to do. And of course going a little bit wide there, oh we were very close to pushing the track limits there. Thankfully the nature of that rumble strip does allow you to sort of pull it in a little bit. So we go into the corkscrew, a bit out of shape, utilising a bit of rear brake. Oh and a bit of a wheelie coming out of the corkscrew as well. Because obviously MotoGP 21, once you wheelie you can't turn the motorcycle like you could on past games. Which is really good because of course in real life you can't turn a motorcycle when you're wheeling. So that is really good, but we did butcher the lap time on this one a little bit. As we break a little bit early and a bit out of shape for turn 11 on this penultimate lap, 10 of 11. Once more, we will be going across the line. We'll be doing this one more time in a moment's time. One more lap to go. Our last one was a 122.498, so again, pretty good lap time, but not to the point of increasing the pace. I might go for a big funky wheelie at the end here, so maybe this is all material, but I'm still going to try and get a damn decent lap in regardless. Nicky Hayden dominating here just like he did in 2006. 
up by a tenth going into turn four, so this is a pretty good lap from us. If we make one little mistake, then I guess it's going to be curtains. Probably shouldn't really push on the final lap. We're up into power setting three, giving it everything we've got. We've got plenty of fuel remaining. We did lose a little bit of a tenth going into turn five. We've been a bit gingerly in there. Been a bit more gentle than I usually do, with uh, just after seeing Mark and Melandry crash and making a mistake there on the previous lap as well. Now breaking into the corkscrew for the final time, the 11th time, and 11th and final time of asking, going to the right hand side, beautifully done, down by 5 tenths of a second, so this is not going to be in anything extraordinary, but it's still going to be a decent lap time nonetheless, it will be in the 122s, so I'm pleased with that one, I'm pretty, pretty confident with the consistency in that right hand, right -hand corner of your screen there, as that is a beautiful wheelie from Nicky Hayden, breaking into the final corner for turn 11, and we'll get a nice funky wheelie crossing the line. Shout out to the marshal on the left. Nicky Hayden wins here in Laguna Seca. So yes, for some reason, I mentioned this in my last video, we have a black screen when crossing the line. No idea where that is, but anyway, Hayden wins. Nakano second and Rossi takes the third and final spot of the podium. A damn decent effort considering we made that hash into the Andretti Kerpin so early on in this Grand Prix. But pleased to say we managed to come back and dominate in fashionable style. So there is Nicky Hayden celebrating like he's just won the entire World Championship and well and truly deserved after that amazing comeback from Andretti Hairpin into turn two to 14th to winning here in Laguna Seca in his home track. So guys, upon that note, thanks for watching as always. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, like, comment and subscribe. Hit the notification bell to be alerted to every single Dot Trace upload. And upon that note, guys, thanks for watching and ciao for now. Oh hi, didn't quite see you there. Good to see you're still here. If this video didn't quite set your appetite, then why not watch some more Dot Trace content by clicking the video shown on screen now. Furthermore, if you would like to follow me on social media, you can do so now with the links down in the description. Consider subscribing so you don't miss a single Dot Trace video.